Hey everyone, welcome back. Larry here again to share with you yet another new gadget by Spike Brewing. This is their Spike Mill. It's not yet available as of today, I, I suppose. It's still in uh, pre-production and will be out eventually, I think maybe later this fall. But they were kind enough to send me one of their pre-production models for evaluation and uh, I have to return it as a result. It's just a loaner. I only have it for the weekend. <laughs> so I'm filming and playing with it like crazy here right now. But I think I play with it enough, at least to give you a quick uh, introduction and my initial thoughts on this mill uh, that is supposed to be officially available later this fall, I think. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, it's coming. And if you have the money for it, uh, it's definitely going to, I think it's going to satisfy you. It's a beast. It's an engineering marvel in a, in a lot of ways, honestly, right? I mean, I've had other mills in the past. Uh, I started off with a JSP malt mill. It was, it was a real simple design, a couple of rollers uh, separated by um, a gap that was uneven all the way across. And it worked all right. I mean, it crushed. It worked for years just fine. Uh, and I eventually moved on to the Northern Brewer version of, of their mill, which held more grain, uh, worked pretty well too, but still had some flaws of its own. But after using that mill uh, and my one previously, I kind of was yearning for something even better than either one of those two. So when I saw Spike was coming up with their own Spike mill, I reached out to them and they sent me one as a loaner. It's only temporary. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to get my hands on a production unit later when they uh, are officially released for sale, right? But until then, let me share with you my experiences over the past few days with this. I think it's a really awesome mill. I think, it, again, as, as long as you can justify the cost, which I think you probably can, uh, it's not a cheap mill. Uh, in fact, they have two versions, a home version and a pro version. Uh, they did some things for sizes and, and, and did some things to lower the cost from the pro mill down to the home mill version, which was about uh, almost half the price, I think, or is half the price, uh, which is still a, a hefty price tag. But I think after you see some of these features here, I think you may be able to justify a higher purchase price, especially if you're in the home brewing for the long haul and uh, it'll pay for itself over time, right? Let's get into some of the details here. Obviously here we have a, a green basket. So, so the first thing is the hopper, right? This thing is sized from according to uh, their own video over on Spike Brewing on their channel. They actually did a little Q&A on this already and they say they, they, they size this bin to hold enough grain so when you crush it, it'll fill up a five gallon bucket up to the top. So you know that you won't overfill your, your bucket if you fill this thing up and crush it down. I didn't do that. I don't want to burn through five, five pounds or five gallons worth of, not five pounds, five gallons worth of grain, uh, honestly, uh, just to evaluate it since I'm not brewing at this time. But I did test a little bit with some uh, smaller portions of grain through the mill and uh, it worked great. So uh, it's nice that they thought ahead that you can actually uh, pour a whole five gallon batch of grain in here and, and know that it will fill up your buckets so you know when to change buckets, right? If you need to. With any grain mill, right, uh, some people like to change their spacings of their crush, uh, the size of the spacing in the rollers to get a different kind of crush, whether it be a fine crush, a coarse crush, somewhere in between, right? And that's useful even for different types of uh, grain, from going from barley to wheat and back, for example, right? Uh, and, and it's a parallel gap, right? So I have uh, my old JSP malt mill. Um, you can only adjust one side, so the ro so the rollers, rather than being parallel, would start to like do one of these things, and and you would get an uneven crush all the way across. So one of the advantages of having an easily adjustable single dial knob is that the rollers can actually can move um, parallel to one another and get an even crush all the way across the length of the of the rollers. Right? Uh, you can go all the way up from down to well, I guess down to zero, basically all the way up to uh, it looks like. Oh, man, uh, over 0 0.07 or a little higher, actually. I found a good mix have, uh, having that set at between like a 0 0.04 and 0 0.05 inches, right? And that seemed to give me a good crush. The 0 0.04 obviously gave me a little bit of a finer crush. The 0 0.05, a little bit coarser crush, which is actually more along the lines of what I've been crushing all these years anyway. So I think I'm more of a fan of the around the 0 0.05 mark, personally. It goes without saying that it's got an integrated motor in it, right? So my other two malt mills, the JSP and the um, the one by Northern Brewer, they actually uh, have to depend upon a power drill uh, or a hand crank, right, to operate this thing. And with hand cranks and power drills both, I guess it's 
really the speed and the RPM of the crush can have a, an impact as to how much pulverization and dust uh, can occur. So there's some inconsistency possibly there in, in your crush, which can introduce some variability into your brood A numbers in terms of your mash extract efficiency, for example. So having it uh, set this way um, in the parallel rollers, uh, it, it really makes it a more consistent crush from batch to batch. And while we're talking about the rollers, what Spike has also done uh, is that they actually changed the ratio of rotation from each roller. Uh, so it's a 1.3 to 1 ratio. So one roller turns at 1x speed, the other one turns at 1.3x speed, right? So one's going one way at a certain speed and the other one's moving a little bit faster, right? And the point of that, uh, according to, the, to their own Q&A video, again, which I'll link down below, uh, and I agree with, is that rather than crushing the grain and dropping it through, through it actually shears as well as crushes which uh, helps, uh, from what I can tell from the, from the grains that I've been crushing here, it helps with, I think, a little bit of uh, retaining more of the husk uh, intact, which is good. But it just seems, just visually, it looks like it's uh, crushing these particles into equally e evenly sized pieces, which, uh, which I wasn't really quite getting in the past with my other mills. And they're talking about the rollers themselves being helical fluted, uh, designs, hardened rollers. Uh, so uh, long story short, uh, these rollers should not wear down <laughs> for the for simply crushing uh, malted grain, right? It should last, uh, if not a very long time, and maybe even forever. And uh, another thing they did along with the integrated motor and the rollers that they have, they also um, connect them both via a chain. It's, it's chain driven not belt driven, right? So uh, belts, if, if you have any kind of belts, any, anything with, with a belt from, from your car to any place that operates with the belts, belts eventually loosen, they wear out, they stretch, they slip. You're always having to adjust them, tweak them, uh, replace them over the years. So Spike has bypassed all of that. They put the, an actual chain driven drive system in here, which, which is pretty cool to watch actually, but it's, but it's safely covered behind uh, under these side covers here. So you don't actually uh, pinch and, and uh, hurt yourself or something by get, getting something caught in there, right? There's also a optional piece, well, a piece that comes with it. It's a little plastic funnel piece that snaps into the underside of the mill uh, right below the rollers. And what that's there for is to help uh, keep the dust down to a minimum. And when you're all done with it, it uh, wraps right up. Uh, the, the power cord wraps right on the back. Uh, with a little m mounting bracket behind it so you can wrap up the cord n nice and tidy like and put it anywhere you want on a shelf um, You can leave it on your bucket, whatever you want to do. That is my quick uh, My quick personal uh, overview of the spike mill um, Given the limited time I have to look at it uh, I don't actually have time to do, do a brew day with it unfortunately this time around but hopefully I'll get my hands on one later this season, uh, this fall, this winter, wh whenever they go on uh, sale uh, officially. But ultimately, is it worth the cost? That's something for you to decide as a consumer. I know there's a lot of you out there who are frugal guys like myself often who will, who will do things on the cheap or, or DIY. And there's a, those gadget fellows out there, those gadget guys who go out there and, and want the, all the great, latest and greatest. Wherever you reside on that spectrum, um, you probably won't go wrong with getting one of these mills. And I hope to have my hands on one in the future to make an actual more videos of actually using it for a real brew day. But until then, uh, give me that thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions about it that I can answer. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button. Until next time, see you later.